Why do 20,000 people follow you? Why do 20? Let's talk about that. Why do 20,000 people follow me? Why do 10,000 people follow you? Why am I twice as important as you on the internet? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> Did you have like a big period of growth? Because for me, it was like years of like pretty much like just, you know, 20% increases every month or whatever. And that slowly compounded. And it grew a lot since January because I've been doing a lot more online. But yeah, it wasn't like explosive growth. I think it was like really slow growth. Yeah, mine was, uh, I mean, I've had Twitter for like 15 years or whatever, 13 years, whatever it is since the beginning. Uh, but I didn't really use it until like maybe a year and a half ago. Like I didn't actually tweet. I just read stuff. It's more than a year and a half ago because the first DM you sent me is going to be on Saturday, this Saturday or this Friday. Oh, wow. Two years. Our DM, our DM anniversary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I was using it. Okay. So w- yeah, whenever I would have had you on AWS FM, I guess I was probably getting started being active on Twitter. Yeah. I would say like. My, I have 20,000 people that follow me because of like six tweets. So like there was one tweet that took me from like a hundred to a thousand. Uh, and then there was another tweet and it was like, I went to 3000 off that one. It's like, I never really grew outside of some big ones. So I, all of my following follows me for a different reason. They're in like five different categories and they hate everything I tweet. And I wish <laughs> I didn't have a following at all. <laughs> Maybe you just start mm-hmm. over. And have a tighter personality. (laughs) I guess I could. A tighter personality. (laughs) I feel like I do have a tighter personality now, but... Yeah, the baggage. I I think I have like... Yeah, the baggage. It's just like there's multiples of my following uh, that I don't deserve. I should be at like a thousand and that would be good. That'd be a healthy following. I've told you about my Twitter history, right? Like how I had to stop for a while and then restart it again? No. Okay, so... uh, Like addicted? Go ahead. No, it was actually... It's a kind of funny situation. So, uh, like years ago, I don't, I don't know how many years ago, maybe like 2017, I'll say like, that's kind of when I first started to really use it and I was using it every day and I was like kind of in a certain bubble. It actually wasn't tech Twitter. It was like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It was adjacent to tech Twitter for sure. I think it was like less on the engineering side and more on just tech in general or like startups, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, and I was like using it pretty frequently. I got to the point where that guy, I think I mentioned this to you before that guy. Oh no, I did tell you this. Cause I said that guy Naval followed me and you kept saying Naval. Oh yeah. <laughs> Naval, right. Naval. Yeah. So he, like the orange. Yeah. Or like yeah. the ocean forces military Naval. <laughs> oh, Naval. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, so he, at one point retweeted something of mine when he has like, crazy following. So I got a huge amount of lights had a huge amount of followers from that. And I was like, Oh, it was really cool. And then something kept happening to the app on my phone where it would just stop working. Like I would use it and it would just be super slow or like, it just like wouldn't be loading at all. And then if I uninstalled it and reinstalled it, it would work for like a day and then it would just stop working again. And that, that friction just made it. So I just stopped, I started to stop using Twitter just overnight basically. Cause it just, you've run like, like- arch linux on your phone what, what's wrong with you no <laughs> so i was just like this is so annoying but i never prioritized fixing it so i just kind of slowly just like weaned weaned off it and then at some point i realized there's some like super deep hidden setting in android that lets you like turn off internet access for a specific app and i don't know how but it kept getting turned on um so i literally was off twitter for a year and a half until i unflipped that and i figured out what was going on and then and then i started using it again wow. and that's when you were using it again and that's how we met and then like i got and more the rest into, like, is history yeah exactly so if yeah if i ever need to like kick my twitter addiction that's just, just got to turn on that setting and it just makes it so frustrating <laughs> to use it well i have to have someone secretly turn it on so i don't know what's going on i've never heard of that yeah i never had issues i just never I, for years i would tweet like once every other year And I mean, that was for 10 years. It was like, I could never understand how people had like the idea to like, I'm going to write this on on, like a public forum. Uh, Like just sharing things about what's going on was just so foreign to me. And I would look at people who had like thousands of tweets, not followers, like they had tweeted thousands of times. And I just thought like, how in the world have they tweeted 
5,000 times. <laughs> and then it's like, that's just a tiny amount. There's like people with 100,000 tweets. And I just couldn't wrap my head around it. And then eventually something clicked. I don't know. I started actually engaging, tweeting with people, you know, replying to people or whatever. And yeah, it now I'm hooked. I'm pretty hooked. It's the first time anything's ever clicked for me on social. Yeah, I think for me, that first phase, it was really like, I always wanted to get better at writing. And before the outlet for that was, oh, write a blog post, which I just never did. It was just so much upfront work and like just a barrier to sitting down and writing like a full blog post a lot. But I still wanted to get better at writing. And what I liked about Twitter was the character limit is like a nice little like training zone for like learning how to write well, because you have to strip every unnecessary word. You have to compress every complex thought into like the fewest characters possible while still like explaining it well. And I think like doing that after like six months, like every day trying to like express my thoughts in that way, I feel like I became so much better at writing and expressing ideas. It's just kind of like you suck at it for a while, then all of a sudden it just flips and you're like, oh yeah, this is how you do it. And you end up sounding more like some like, like, like really legit writers. That's what they do. They just mm. like analyze every word and like drop the ones that are just fluff. Kill your darlings. Yeah, I think exactly. they say. Yeah. Do you remember the 140 characters? I don't even remember it at this point. I can't believe it was that short at one point. I know. That's intense. Yeah. And now there's no limit. Well, it's like, is it 4,000 or something? Something crazy, yeah. I still impose artificial limits on myself. I say that if I'm doing just a tweet on my own, I'm sticking to 280 limit. Yeah. If I'm replying to someone, I'm, I'm, I'll am i go over because I'm like trying to like explain something in detail. But yeah. yeah, I like, I've always liked that it forced you to compress. I saw you say that on Twitter that you kind of had that. I think I intuitively did the same thing. Like I, I wouldn't write like a first tweet that was like a big, I saw somebody the other day post like a whole blog post on like a top tweet, like a top level tweet. I thought that was interesting. I don't know if that's going to be a thing. I just never read them. I had like formatting and everything. Yeah. It's just, it's not the place I want to like sit down and read yeah. for seven minutes in a row. <laughs> <laughs> it feels very LinkedIn. I feel like whenever I see screenshots of LinkedIn, it's, it's stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. But I do like in a reply when somebody has a tough question. Now you're not stuck like chaining. Repl- you can just like write a big blob and it might be helpful to them. I've seen you do that. I like the idea that I could do it. I haven't done it yet. I mean, I'm not very helpful on the Internet, but <laughs> it's possible now. There's nothing <laughs> restricting me. Yeah, I-, I was worried that people would use it too much and then my feed would just be these giant things. But so far, no one's really using it too much. So it hasn't been hasn't been bad yeah i guess we're just talking about twitter now i don't know how this happened but uh did you see some i don't know if elon musk tweeted it somebody tweeted that something about t- amount of time spent looking at a tweet like that's what drives how much it'll get spread or something wait really i don't know like the yeah that's what he, somebody said time spent yeah like how if you spend a lot of time looking at a tweet then that tweet is getting like some kind of a boost from the algorithm. So if I write a tweet where everything is spelled wrong and people are like trying to like struggling <laughs> to read it or like it's really confusing, that will go viral. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I do feel like there's something with misspellings that people have caught in the past. I don't know if this is a new change and I don't know why I brought it up because I just don't care. That is but interesting. I brought it up because we're talking about Twitter. Okay, let's talk about something else. <laughs> well, what are you doing technically? Like what are you working on engineering wise? What are you typing into your computer? It's a great question, Dax. So right now, my default project is stat news. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're doing a rewrite, as you know, uh, in Astro. And oh, we got to talk about CloudFront. Uh, That's related to my stat news work. That's my default project. I want after vacation to get back on Rebase. But that's what I want to answer right now. But I can't because it's not true. I'm not technically writing it into my computer right now. But it's top of mind. (laughs) We're working on some stuff. We've got some music coming. I also want to say that I'm working on Laravel stuff right now, but I'm not. You want to say. <laughs> I want to say. You're not answering my question at all. I asked what you were doing and you're just giving me your hopes and dreams. <laughs> I really am. Uh, if I'm being honest, I've been in a bit of a heavy uh, non-technical phase here mm. since we wrapped up the Stat Muse. We had a big push, like doing a paywall on the Elixir app that is the existing Stat Muse app. That was... It was hard. It was like the first time I've pushed hard in like five years. Uh, (laughs) And by pushed hard, I just mean like, I mean, I still work the same hours mostly. I just, I didn't take a lot of breaks. No, I know what this means. It means 
<laughs> this is so funny. It's it's so clear what you mean by push hard because what you were normally doing was spending half the day on Twitch talking to chat. Okay, and then, okay. And then you just removed that part of it and you went back to being a normal person. And uh, relatively, that's pushing hard these days. It was hard, okay? It was hard on me and my family. No, I, I get it. I am in the same place, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's been like, it's been less less of, of that. Yeah. Are More you, of this. Are you guys close? Cause you guys are rewriting the whole site in Astro, um, which I'm really excited by. Cause I think it's going to be maybe the biggest trafficked Astro site potentially that's going to be out there. Cause Astro is still pretty new. Yeah. Uh, so you guys will be like a great one, a great case study for them. And then two, since it's being deployed through SST and, and a great one for us as well. And it's, a, it's like such a good use case. Like it's for, like a, a company that has like a ton of traffic with like, like real users using it, like that makes money uh, using a new tech and it's going to be all serverless. And now the stale while revalidate thing came out, which is, I think you guys are going to use that a lot, right? Yeah. Just hope it all works. You know, just <laughs> having this moment where I'm like, this is all going to work, right? I mean, serv- <laughs> like I'm going to have to get, yeah, it's like, it's not that SST is not going to work. It's just like, uh, got to make sure limits you know like Mm. quotas are all in place to handle the kind of load for page just normal pages Mm -hmm. to be hit because i I don't know lambda invocation limits there's a lot of different limits involved i don't think we're gonna have any problems i think we can get it all sorted out we're gonna have to like figure out a way to load test it and make sure but yeah we do something like i don't know 50 million uniques now a month Mm -hmm. Uh, we've grown like crazy every month for the last year it's definitely gonna be one of the bigger astro sites i talked to fred about it and he said you want to do like a case study or something like it's it's a uh, it's going to be a big a big moment yeah uh, i'm excited but yeah we're close i'd say we're like 80 percent in terms of the ui like stuff that needs to be there and then so there's like 20 percent left on that but then there's all the other stuff like i said load testing we got to be sure that this thing's not going to fall over mm-hmm. uh there's other like weird stuff like analytics and all these stupid things i have to port over that i, I forget about all the time uh but like the bulk of the app is written like the front end stuff. Uh, yeah, we're getting close. Yeah. Do you have an idea of how you're going to roll it over? Like, are you going to like slowly, is it like an AB thing where people slowly move on to the new one? I don't know. I haven't gotten that far. Mm. I do know I want some way to prove like with our current load that it all just works Mm -hmm. so that as we bring people over, uh, there's not a big fear, but yeah, I think gradually would be the way to do it. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that in terms of the new infrastructure and the old and what it would look like to kind of phase it in. Yeah. Another thing I like about this, and this kind of ties in a little bit with uh, something else on our end as well, is this was a rewrite, which is kind of a bad word in the in the software engineering world. It's like you never do a rewrite. It's bad. If you do a rewrite, you're going to fail. Yeah. Kind of like it's one of those things that I think people still say in like a very absolute way, but you just did a, you're doing a rewrite like from completely ground up. Like you're not keeping, mm-hmm. like it wasn't progressive. It was, we're rewriting all of it and then we're going to switch over. Uh, we did the same thing with SC 2.0 uh, last year, and we did, we flipped the switch in January. And during and while I was rewriting it, that was at the peak of like the rewrite controversy because Elon Musk said Twitter needed to be rewritten, and everyone's oh, like, yeah. "I'm a real engineer, and I know that you should never rewrite things." Everyone was saying that, and I was sitting there just like rewriting every single line, being like, "Okay, everyone thinks I shouldn't <laughs> be doing this," but as of last week. Uh, the download because we switched to a new package name, so we have like two separate charts. The ST2 package crossed the SST1 package. There's more people using wow. the second one than the first one. And that was yeah. uh, five ish or so months. Um, so it, like, you know, yeah, of course there were some bumps that happened, but you can pull off a rewrite. It's not something you should do lightly. And it's definitely not like a novice thing. Like, I think you have to be pretty, be pretty experienced to like do something like that. But sometimes it's just necessary. Like, you can't just keep stuff around that's been around for super long and sometimes if you don't rewrite it like even the small parts you refactor like the bad parts grow faster than the parts that you're fixing so sometimes you just got to do it yeah i knew we needed to do it and everyone's bought in at stat muse in terms of this being the right decision but i did feel weird ever saying so publicly because i it's the stigma it's like i forgot about the elon stuff with twitter but i knew it just feels bad to say you're rewriting something because you know everyone's instinct when they hear that it's like whoa whoa why whoa whoa, why are you rewriting it like you're from scratch no 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 no. that's the biggest thing you don't do what it was like joel spolsky or something yeah it was originally had some list yeah and it's like the commandments of development it was like one of them don't ever rewrite but sometimes you have to rewrite i mean for us it was like 
an eight year old code base. And we started StatMuse not even knowing what StatMuse was. And it, like we built half of it. It was like a spa with React and it was embedded in this big Elixir Phoenix app. So part of it was like server generated, part of it was mm-hmm. client side rendered. It was just this big mess that kind of evolved over eight years. And it's just a lot simpler. Like if you look at the code base that we've built now with SST and Astro compared to the existing code base, it's just insane how much less there is there. And it's just gonna be so much easier to work with as we build out new stuff. So yeah, it was the right move for us. It does feel bad to say it. And it feels like there's too much nuance to have that conversation publicly. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in B2B and I, it occurred to me at one point that uh, I've seen so many cases where you'll have a company that is an incumbent, like they've done really well and they like kind of own a market, but their product is just getting worse and worse because it's just built on top of just not good. Uh, and they never do the rewrite because it's bad. It's hard to get buy-in for that. Everyone's like very resistant to like eat, eat the cost there. But you know what happens? A competitor does the rewrite. Someone new yeah. starts from ground up, does the rewrite they should have done. And they like slowly mm-hmm. just chip away at it. And every B2B shift happens in this exa- Almost every single one I've ever seen has been like this. Like I worked at a company that uh, made software for salons. And everyone uses this thing called MindBody. It's super old, super terrible, uh, but they just had the whole market share. And it took this new company a while to get to feature parity, maybe like two to three years. But the moment they were at feature parity, it was just like 100% of the market was switching. <laughs> like everyone was just yeah. switching over. So, and there's nothing the other company could do at that point. So if you don't rewrite it at some point, like your competitor will just do it for you. Yeah, that's great. I, I never considered that. Like there's a point on the horizon where someone's going to rewrite it. it. It better be you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Huh. The, uh, still why revalidate. We should talk about that. Yeah. Just briefly. Well, you broke the news yesterday, which I was like, oh, I can't believe Adam. Because we were both. <laughs> so for context, there is a yeah. caching feature in CDNs that our CDNs are supposed to support called stale while revalidate. Basically, it makes it so if it caches something, uh, the next request that comes in, it'll serve the cache version but if it's like this is too old in the background will refetch it so no one ever experiences a slow load which is a really nice feature and Vercel like built their own version of this and they call it isr and people love it uh, but cloudfront has never supported this even though the spec has been out for like i think i think i was trying to look i think the spec for this has been out for like maybe a decade almost it's been around for a while fastly had it in 2014 like implemented oh okay so. yeah exactly so it's almost 10 years where it's been available and they haven't had it and me and adam have just kept checking like is it out is it out adam needed it for stat muse we needed it for Next.js support because we didn't want to support isr and we're like Let's just wait till they get a swr every single day we're talking like when are they gonna go we talked to the cloudfront team they're like oh it's coming soon it's coming soon and then somehow <laughs> you were the one that saw <laughs> it and posted it so, so congratulations i got a dm my guy dm'd me you guys your guy let you down <laughs> Uh, but the thing is, it's a public, like it's in all those aggregators. If you, if anybody had just been watching the RSS feed for like AWS news, they would have seen it, right? It was in that big feed, I'm sure. So I, it wasn't like I was that special for breaking it, but I was special for breaking it before you. But was it that day? Like you, you posted it yesterday and was that the day they posted it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I linked to the public article. Yeah. Uh, he just DM'd it to me and was like, it's live. Oh. I think I was part of the reason I was. Well, that sounded so bad, <laughs> Mr. AWS I mean, I hero was, over here. <laughs> no, I was one of the. I was one of the people that requested the feature originally. Like when I spoke about this with this person, it was like, yeah, we could get that on our roadmap. And I don't know that I was the reason they built it, but I was one of the contributing factors. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure that was product feedback. Very nice. Know. Maybe not. Good work. Or maybe maybe it's actually from the forums. I don't know. But I know that uh, Cloudflare has had a bad implementation uh, for some time. Like, did you know this? They no. sort of support it, but it's not correct. It's like to spec. Oh, I didn't know that. That's good to know. Yeah, they thought they implemented it, but it's not right. There's some stuff with Cloudflare where like it's such a good platform, but I have seen CloudFront surprisingly outperform it in a bunch of cases. Well, the Vercel stuff. Right? Like all your Vercel benchmarking. Yeah. That's sort of pitting AWS against Cloudflare, right? Well, sort of. Well, I, I would say not really. I think all the issues that came from the Vercel Edge, like all the slowness that came from the Vercel Edge stuff was probably on Vercel's side. They must be doing additional stuff because people said that when they use Cloudflare directly, it's like crazy good performance, which is what I'd expect. Yeah. Do we want to explain what it is to anybody? 
No. I like kind of did. No. <laughs> In like a short yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you did. The stale. You said it was stale. I was totally stale listening. Stale, wallet, revalidate. Uh, wait, no, what was it? Sometimes, can I just say this, Dax? Sometimes you just don't have it, you know? this. I feel like this, this episode, we just, sometimes you just don't have your A game. And I don't think we had it today. That's okay. Sometimes you just got to phone it in, you know, just got to get an episode out there. <laughs> just a lot of things about this episode I could do without. Uh, just things I said, not things you said. Well, some of the things you said. But <laughs> uh, it is what it is. Okay. Well, Sad Water Valde is out. It's good. Go use it. It's good. It's on CloudFront. It just, it, to me, it means like Next.js just lost a differentiating feature to all the other frameworks. Like if you deploy with SST, you can deploy any of those web frameworks, Solid Start, Astro, Svelte Kit, whatever, even Next.js. And now there's one less thing that Next.js had that it, it's not special anymore. Like all those frameworks have that feature now. And it was a huge feature for me. I mean, I for things I build, uh, it was important to me. And now granted, it's use case specific. Like if you're not building something where that feature matters and you've probably never heard of it and you don't care, but it is really nice. And to have that now in all these frameworks, I think is pretty cool. Nice. Anyway, wow. This Okay, let's just stop the bleeding. Let's just end this episode okay. <laughs> before, before it gets any worse. Uh, we'll try again next time, Dax. All right. Are you really just going to say, all right, you're not going to acknowledge or anything, just like, help me? I don't know. I, <laughs> you said everything that I... What's there to say after that? You already thought, okay. Well, do you agree? I can't really tell if you agree. I thought this was okay. I, I, we just didn't have a lot of stuff to talk about, but I think the stuff we talked about was good. Just not going to be super long. The next one, though, that we're going to record right after this one, we're surely going to have it's gonna to be talk better. about. It's going to go... Yeah, it's going to go so much better. Okay. Well, I haven't eaten anything yet today, so I'm going to blame it on that. Oh, that's I'm gonna the problem. I'm going to grab the Lara bar and wake myself up. Okay, good idea. I'm going to grab a Lara bar and I didn't end recording yet. This is a, okay, this is a terrible finish. Mm-hmm.